December the 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. So why the hell shouldn't we make lots of movies about it? Today we're looking at two completely different movies that are based on the same historical event. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. 1970's Tora 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 and 2001's Pearl Harbor. <laughs> We can assume that you have some idea what the attack on Pearl Harbor refers to. Basically, it was the catalyst that brought the previously isolationist United States into the Second World War in a major way. It was one of the defining events of World War II, along with the Battle of Britain and D-Day, and it was tailor-made for a major motion picture. In 1962, 20th Century Fox released a major adaptation of Cornelius Ryan's book, The Longest Day. The Longest Day. The Longest Day. A movie that was a series of vignettes revolving around the build-up to and the June 6 D-Day landings in France. It was a star-studded event with almost every major movie star of the time appearing in a few scenes. I mean, Henry Fonda, John Wayne, Robert Mitchum, Richard Burton, Sean Connery, George Segal, Robert Wagner, Red Buttons. If it wasn't for the fact it was black and white, you'd see Lucille Ball in there somewhere. It was a sizable hit, and a few years later, Fox decided to apply some of the same formula to the attack on Pearl Harbor. I don't mean they would literally get a bunch of stars to man torpedo planes and attack Pearl Harbor, but they would use the vignette approach to tell a large story by lots of little stories. It's like that genre of terrible star-studded romantic comedies with a couple of separate love stories themed around a holiday, New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, etc. It quickly became an overplayed genre with more bombs than were dropped on December 7, 1941. Torah 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 chronicled the lead up to the attack and the event itself from both perspectives. American and Japanese scenes were handled by different crews, almost as if they were two different movies. But the tone of the film is fairly consistent. There are idiot Americans making boneheaded decisions and others trying to make the right call. There are the Japanese who are gung-ho for the attack, while others are more disdainful of the duties they are called on to perform. Like people who work in call centers. <laughs> Tora Tora Tora, the Japanese confirmation signal to begin the attack, doesn't have the big name Hollywood stars of the longest day, but instead fills the film with experienced character actors. You know, the guy from that thing, and Oscar Goldman. We see the naval and army types each having their own theories as to what is happening, some of which are portrayed as prescient and correct, and others, in hindsight, appearing to be completely incompetent arseheads. Like Oscar Goldman, how they ever gave him $6 million, I'll never know. They've asked for some of our tankers, too. How they expect us to feed these fat battle wagons that are parked out here in this landlocked duck pond. Everyone is playing everything straight down the line with the gravitas the story called for, which you'd expect considering the film would premiere just under 30 years after the actual event. There's very little comic relief or goofy stuff whatsoever, making Tora 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 a great movie, but a terrible subject for a Stan Fine movie review. The actual attack is handled spectacularly, almost all practical effects filmed and edited in an exciting way, though it's fairly clean and lacking gore. Tora 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 doesn't have great characters who you follow throughout the film, and many of them become irrelevant once the attack starts, so for most people, the actual attack sequences are the reason you watch the film. Tora 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 wasn't highly thought of on release, and while it eventually made its money back in the US, its high budget meant that it took a while. Not a flop, but a disappointment. Like asking your grandmother if she wants to eat Five Guys, and she seemed really cool with the idea until you explain you mean hamburgers. Tora 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 did gangbusters in Japan though. In 1970, while the US was still mired in the increasingly unpopular Vietnam War, Hollywood studios released a slew of big budget war movies, with none of them set in Vietnam. 20th Century Fox alone released three big war movies that year, with both the lower budgeted Patton and MASH out earning Tora Tora Tora. Fast forward 30 years later and Hollywood made another spectacular epic based around the attack on Pearl Harbor, and this time they went in a very, very different way. Pearl Harbor, directed by Michael Bay, was released in 2001. As a big budget movie, this was trying to be all things to all people. So it was trying to have a foot in historical context and an action film, but for the most part tries to be a date movie. Hey, it's okay about a love triangle starring beautiful people posed in picturesque shots looking like they were expensive ads for expensive perfume. Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett are American pilots. They've been friends since childhood. Affleck falls for a nurse who's jabbing something in his bum, played by Kate Beckinsale. And they go a courtin' before Affleck goes off to fight in the Battle of Britain, where he is thought to be killed in action. This being a movie about a love triangle, Josh Hartnett's character and Kate Beckinsale's character console each other, which ends up with them having sex on a pile of parachutes. Ooh, 
How would you feel if you were a pilot who had to bail out over the Pacific, but your parachute was somehow glued to your reserve chute? This being a movie about a love triangle, Ben Affleck comes back from the dead, which is better than falling to your death because your parachute was jizzed on. Affleck and Hartnett square off, Kate Beckinsale glows, not merely because it's Kate Beckinsale, but because not all of it ended up on the parachute and she's pregnant with Josh's baby. Ooh, in all of this, we have a gaggle of actors, John Voight, Jennifer Garner, Ewan Bremner, Michael Shannon, and of course, Cuba Gooding Jr., who's the only smaller role with anything to do. His thing is, he's a black man in the segregated armed services of the day, and he's prevented from shooting guns. Cuba Gooding Jr. had won an Academy Award a few years earlier, and now he's in a Michael Bay movie. They don't have time for bullshit and neither do I. Pearl Harbor is attacked by Japan and apparently only by people who think it's a terrible idea. It's an intense scene with some amazing special effects, most of which hold up quite well, but some of the CG enhancements are a little bit obvious. This action scene can look slightly artificial if you want to be a picky bastard, but I do, I do. This is where Tora Tora Tora, almost all made in camera, still holds up so well over half a century later. After the titular attack, the last act follows Operation Doolittle, named after Alec Baldwin's character, which was a revenge attack on Japan, but also possibly a suicide mission taking place in April 1942, since the mission to bomb Tokyo only has enough fuel to make it to China, which they do, crash land, and fight off the entire Japanese army with pistols before making it back to America. Hartnett's character dies of his wounds, but this being a film about a love triangle, Ben Affleck and Kate Beckinsale can get together and raise Hartnett's son, little bastard, as their own. Pearl Harbor is never less than gorgeous to look at, and that's just not the cast of walking sex. Bay knows how to compose a shot, even if it tends to favor artificial spectacle in every shot. I mean, surely all those sparks are a terrible fire hazard. It's dumb in a goofy, fun, but still dumb way. It's never aggressively moronic, more like superficially glossy. It's never disappointing since you know it's a Michael Bay movie going in, and if you expected anything greater than that, then that's really on you. The film was apparently a difficult shoot. Bay wanted to show the horrors of war with blood and guts and people being blown apart. The studio wanted to keep the ratings down, so that tug of war resulted in the film we have now, which just shows the horrors of Michael Bay. Both films are entertaining in their own way, provided you're in the right mood. Tora 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 is almost a procedural leading up to the attack on Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is a breezy summer romance film, like Mamma Mia, but with people being killed and maimed and drowned and burned and shot and falling to their deaths in semen compromised parachutes. Tora 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 is a relatively dry movie that tells a story of hubris, incompetence, disaster and defeat, while Pearl Harbor is a Michael Bay movie. It's like a PT cruiser that's just gotten a wash and wax, so it looks nice and schmick from certain angles and in the right light and with the right Instagram filter. But then you realize it's still a fucking PT cruiser. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos.